Sunday. Brought to you by the Mazda CX-3. Tonight on Sunday, when it comes to our vulnerable children, the system is broken. How do we fix it? They're the thousand most studied people on the planet. The Dunedin researchers had finally discovered a mechanism underpinning violent behaviour. We've all seen the headlines, Nia and Moko. James Fakarudu, the Kahui twins, just a few of New Zealand's abused children. So what, if anything, does work in the existing system? Hmm. Can the epic Dunedin study save our kids? What do you say to those people who think this is just another example of social engineering, nanny state? Get a bit of compassion. Also get to grips with the research. Abby was glorious and little and blonde, very happy. A mother looking for answers to her family's grief. I have been really determined to look after myself and do everything I possibly can to keep our family together. What can the loss of Abby teach us all? We've got two beautiful, incredible teenage boys. And I want to live. Kia ora, I'm Miriam McCummell. If a child seems destined for a life of violence and crime, can we change that path? Can that child instead become a successful member of society? Well, Otago University professor Richie Poulton reckons not only can it be done, it must be done. The professor has used science to prove what we've done in the past for vulnerable kids hasn't worked, but says he knows what will. John Hudson reveals the fascinating results. These human beings have been treated like human detritus, uh, and it angers me, really pisses me off, that it's been that way for so long. Professor Richie Poulton is on a mission to use science to help New Zealand's most vulnerable children. These are children who've been beaten black and blue from the time they were babies. And it'll make your ears bleed, some of it. New Zealand's record on abuse and neglect of children isn't good. Each week, more than 2,000 complaints are received by government services, resulting in 4,000 children going into care each year. The average age of these children is eight, and they've already been in seven or eight homes. Not a good start, but the statistics get much worse. By 21, 90% of them are on the benefit. A quarter are on the benefit with a child, and a third have been before the courts. But imagine if you could invent a system that helped these children much earlier. The current system is not delivering effectively for vulnerable children and young people. Social Development Minister Anne Tolley says she's been talking to some of the children behind those statistics. Many is the time they had me in tears in my office. This is happening to us, they said. But no one ever asks what we want or what is best for us. They told me that above all else, they want a loving, safe and stable home. So we're about to see the biggest shake-up in state social services in decades. A new ministry to replace SIFS. Professor Poulton was on the expert advisory panel behind the overhaul. SIFS is the whipping boy of society, isn't it? It's a hell of a job being, uh, being involved in, in dealing with these people who have come from very difficult circumstances. And right now, all the system's concerned about is making sure it doesn't end up in the front page of the Don Post with another awful case of child abuse. We've all seen the headlines, Nia and Moko, James Fakaruru, the Kahui twins, just a few of New Zealand's abused children. So what, if anything, does work in the existing system? Hmm. I think my struggle giving you a clear response tells you an enormous amount, doesn't it? Seeing a lot of frustrated people, seeing caregivers who are well motivated but not skilled or supported appropriately, and seeing all this dysfunction come down on the heads and the souls of these kids who have not done anything wrong, leaves me with a feeling of the system as it is, despite a lot of good people in it, uh, being pretty much broken. 
The new ministry doesn't yet have a name, let alone a budget, but early intervention is part of its brief and it will be entirely accountable for children in its care. The new system's going to require a completely different culture. It's going to require coalface people that are keen on doing things differently. And of course it's going to require politicians to remain committed to it. And the return will be in what? Fewer people ending up F before the justice system? Fewer people in prison, more people in employment for longer periods, fewer people using mental health services, fewer people dropping out of school. It goes on. What do you say to those people who think this is just another example of social engineering, nanny state? Get a bit of compassion. Also get to grips with the research uh, that suggests that this is exactly what's required. Richie Poulton knows what the research says because he did much of it. He's the head of the Dunedin study, the longest running, most comprehensive investigation into human behaviour the world has ever seen. In 1972, a medical school from a small city in New Zealand embarked on the ultimate nature-nurture test. They decided to take every child born in Dunedin over a year and follow them for life. For 44 years now, they've measured their development in every imaginable way. Their genes, their blood pressure, their private lives, successes and failures. They've become the 1,000 most studied people in the world. And they told scientists that human behaviour, including violence, is a product of how our genes interact with the environment we live in. Violent people cost society huge amounts of money in treating victims, police time, and in the prison and justice systems. Scientists like Ritchie have known for 20 years that nature gives about 30% of people a gene that predisposes them to violent behaviour. However, most of these people aren't violent. But in 2002, the Dunedin study made an incredible breakthrough. It discovered it's the way some of these people are nurtured that makes them very violent. The Dunedin researchers had finally discovered a mechanism underpinning violent behaviour. It's as if nature loads a gun and nurture pulls the trigger. It was a classic case of no longer being nature versus nurture. It's nature via nurture. The Dunedin study proved child abuse often triggers a life of antisocial behaviour. Trigger is the abuse or the maltreatment or the neglect. And the solution? There's no rocket science about this. It's about getting some very basic things done well. For example, in this country, if you go to an antenatal class, you'll see a number of people standing outside the antenatal class at break time smoking cigarettes. I mean, go figure. After the break... Can you do up your zip? The simple secret of turning children into healthy, wealthy and successful adults. High five. So you're sure you can change a person's life course? Yes, of course you can. There are three things Richie Poulton is passionate about. Oh, this is breathtaking. His rugby, go, go. especially when the Highlanders are winning. His family, of course, fellow psychologist and wife, Sandia. Their hip-hop dancing daughter, Priyanka and his work. What do you think of the work that he does? It's amazing. It's incredible. Not necessarily the job itself, but the passion that he puts into it. A passion he shares with his PhD students. What do you think the challenges are when you confront someone with this type of disorder? Always wanting to know what really makes people who they are. Why do people react the way they do? Why do people do good things? Why do people do bad things? The Dunedin study Richie Poulton heads has been going so long and has been so successful, it's become a museum exhibition. Is he saying anything sensible? Displaying how the lives of the thousand who became study members as babies... We're back in the 70s. ...have changed with each passing decade. And you've still got 95% on board. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, and that's, you know, testament to the goodwill that exists in this group of people. And they do it in the main because they believe it will help others and I want to make sure the research gets into those um, situations where it can help others. So Richie Poulton now has another role, to try to put what's been learned from the Dunedin study into practice. It's not about ambulance at the bottom of the cliff, 
He's science advisor to the Ministry of Social Development. Band-Aids, that's sad, sick and scandalous. It's about getting in as early as you can. Either Helping turn science into government life. policy. My skill is in understanding the limits of the science, how to interpret it, how probably to convey it to people who are not scientists, in a way that they can use it to best effect in their decision making. The new SIFS organisation will be pushing for Rolls-Royce interventions, not crappy old beat-out bomb type interventions, which for so long these kids who are the most vulnerable have got. I mean, that means nothing if there's no good interventions out there, but there are now some good interventions. That do work? That do work. What's your favourite one? This bright green one? If you want to make the biggest yeah, difference for people's well, lives, you have to focus on uh, what's going on between conception and getting to school. Psychologists know that by the time children are three, those who are disruptive, bullies and unpopular with their classmates and teachers are the ones who will struggle throughout life. And Richie Poulton says targeting those young children and their families will reap the greatest long-term benefits. You just don't deal with the kids once they, their lives have got completely out of control and they're in care. You try and nip that in the bud long before that ever becomes a remote possibility. Head on this side. That would mean revamping the role of traditional organisations like Plunkett. Plunkett get into 91% of New Zealand homes. High trust in the brand. Plunkett, he says, is in the perfect position to spot the early signs of trouble. You have to get into the homes to see in the context of the family exactly what the risk profile looks like, to then know what sort of extra help or support, not being judgmental, being a parent's bloody hard, what extra support would make a difference for those children. Preschool education provides another opportunity to intervene early. Children that have problems with emotion regulation, for example, these are findings directly from the Dunedin study, uh, tend to have a whole bunch of negative outcomes down the track when they're adults. They end up in jail more often. They end up in poor physical health. They end up being poor financially and they end up behaving in a less than ideal way when they're parenting. Have you all got your jackets on? Because it's cold this morning. Can you do up your zip? The Dunedin study discovered the children who succeed most in life... It's really good trying. ...those who grow up to have better health, wealth and relationships all display one crucial attribute as preschoolers. They're the ones who show the most self-control. High five. Self-control is really made up of two parts that relate to each other. One's the ability to keep your emotions in check, a bit of anger or excitement. Right, you try. And then once that's in check, then being able to focus on a task and complete it. And the good news is, self-control can be taught. There are all sorts of programs out there now because people have cottoned on to the importance of self-control that are geared towards improving or building or strengthening their skills. Staff at Grant Spray's kindergarten have cottoned on. They've been working hard to help children improve self-control. Do you need some help with yours as well? Yes. Can you say, help me please? Yes. Mm, well done. That was nice asking. And it's paid off it. already. Something like children being pushed by another child, we empower the children to deal with it rather than us necessarily stepping in all the time. Yep. So we've taught them things like saying, stop it, I don't like it when you push me and being mm -hmm. able to express their feelings. And we just know that if children can learn at this level, then it's going to carry them right through. Yeah. We're not going to get the problems later on. This is truly the coalface in the nicest possible way. And hearing this, um, uh, it really does give me a bit of a thrill. Thank you for your inspiration. Yeah. Don't go over the top now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the ambience in this kindergarten Calm children, happy at play, that's what Richie Poulton wants for every child in New Zealand. So you're sure you can change a person's life course? Yes, of course you can. The Dunedin study has already saved lives overseas. In the 1980s, it examined the development of teenage brains, research which led directly to the US Supreme Court changing from 17 to 18 the age at which people could be held accountable for murder and executed. As a result, 72 teenagers were not put to death. One might say that, OK, you've delayed the period of responsibility by only one year, and that may seem rather ho-hum, but in truth, a whole bunch of kids 
or young people I should say, came off death row. Richie Poulton spent his early years as a clinical psychologist working with criminals in prisons. He's seen firsthand what can happen in later life to children who are abused. I work with at-risk prisoners, those that were trying to kill themselves, so I heard some awful stories, and these kids are on par. Child welfare should be about care and protection, and sometimes that will still mean removing children from abusive parents. What has happened in the past is people have wondered and wondered and wondered, and stuff hasn't happened. Now you need a system that is sophisticated in its response and being able to discern the likelihood and then make quick calls to remove a child before it gets too bad. Richie Poulton knows some people are skeptical. The panel's done a great job, but of course we'll wait and see. I would wait and see too. We've got a good blueprint. Now the real work starts. Uh, and if you work hard, there's a chance good stuff might happen. And we'd like to thank Razor Films, the makers of Why Am I, for their help with tonight's story. If you'd like to find out more about the Dunedin study, how it works and what they've discovered, check out the award-winning documentary series Why Am I, which begins on TV1 this Tuesday. Or, if you can't wait, the series is already available on TVNZ On Demand.